thanks for coming back to the channel. We've got some new stuff to look at today from the folks over at Sound Tools. Thanks to them, as always, for sending everything over. Though this is not a sponsored video and everything here will be going back to them just as soon as we're done checking it out together. So we've got the Catbox 8 here today, along with the new SuperCat 7 performance grade network cable that Sound Tools recently released. I'm sure you're familiar with the audio over cat cable concept at this point, but let me know if you've got any general questions in the comments below. I've been waiting a while to see the Catbox 8 in its finished form. I think it was back in 2020 when I last visited Sound Tools in person at the NAMM show and saw an early draft of these. Now that they're in production, they look great and perform just as I would expect, having used the original cat boxes pretty regularly in the past few years. And that's a good place to start, actually, looking at how these are different from the original cat box. With the original, you've got your choice of input or output XLR configurations, and on each end of the box, there is an RJ45 Ethercon in parallel, so either side can be the in or through as you connect to other boxes or cattail breakouts in your setup. So they're a really handy little box, and I'm sure you know in a standard Cat5e 6 or 7 cable, there are four twisted pairs that end up getting wired to the four XLR connectors on these boxes. I hesitate to say that it gives you four channels because you can use these for analog audio or with AES digital audio that transports two channels per twisted pair. And if you're doing things like DMX lighting control, you're getting 512 channels in that uh, terminology. So you get the idea. There's four twisted pairs, though, per network cable, and you can use them as you see fit for analog or digital signals. Now, let's look at the Catbox 8 itself. In its stock configuration out of the box, there are two RJ45 connectors wired in parallel. Again, so either can be the input or through connector. And there are two sets of XLR connectors, one input and one output side, again, in parallel. So in this configuration, what you plug into channel one on the input side will come out of channel one on the output side and channel one on both of the RJ45 connectors, as you would expect. So essentially here we have a four channel passive split snake, and those can be useful for all sorts of different things like splitting inputs to two different mixing consoles. However, if we open up the Catbox 8, we can remove this little jumper cable and that separates the two sides, turning them into individual input and output modules that can be used at the end of a run. I say at the end of the run, since in this configuration there's only one RJ45 connector per set of XLR connectors, so there's no pass through. If you're using it as a drop snake stage box, you wouldn't need a pass through in most scenarios, so that should be just fine. Now I've heard from some of you directly already suggesting you'd prefer to see the jumper cable function on a switch or button in the future. Unfortunately, I think the type of switch you'd need and the complexity it would add to assembling these would add too much to the overall cost to be viable. In fact, it looks like Sound Tools has moved the previous ground lift button to an internal jumper as well to shave off a few dollars. So let me know in the comments if you've used that lift switch very often in the past or it becoming a jumper, if that's a big deal or not to you. So with the jumper removed, you'll need a separate cable coming to each side since the two sides are no longer in parallel. And that means you have four twisted pairs to work with in each direction. On stage, this could be a great way to pick up the inputs from four microphones or any other source while returning to stereo monitor feeds back to musicians to connect to a local headphone amp at their position. On the other end of the run from these, you could use cattails to connect to a standard splitter or a digital snakehead or mixer directly, or you could hit a cat box at the first mixer and take the through from that to front of house and a set of cattails there. I'm sure some of you watching this have much more creative ideas on how to use these, so let me know in the comments how you would use them on your stages and in your setups. Where these cat boxes really shine, in my opinion, is in situations where you need a quick disconnect for some logistical reason. 
Maybe you're striking and resetting a stage between soundcheck and a performance, or looking for a faster way to deploy a rig or a stage setup consistently night after night. Either way, having disconnects can be a huge help, and these are a nice alternative to the heavier traditional multi-core snakes with big expensive multi-pin mass connectors that we see on the bigger productions. Now, I don't think of these as a replacement or competition for those types of snakes at all. Really, they each have their purpose and place in different types of work and in different scenarios. However, traditional disconnect snakes are typically built to have 12 or more channels per cable or per box. By the time you buy all the components to make the disconnect, you're just not going to do it for only a few channels. If we look at traditional whirlwind stage snakes with disconnects, for example, a 50 foot run of W1 cable with ends goes for over $600, and that's before you add the stage box or the fan out for the other end. So while it makes sense to use those traditional disconnect snakes for 12 or more channels and on bigger productions, once you get down to individual musicians on stage or components, it can be really useful to have four channel disconnects with a much cheaper, lighter, and easier to service network cable doing all the work. If you're still watching, leave a like and comment on this video down below. And at the end of the month, I'll pick somebody to send a pair of these bags and a sticker pack to. Uh, you've got to be in the United States, unfortunately. Sorry to all the global viewers. And we'll definitely do this again in upcoming videos. That brings us to their new SuperCat 7 cable, which is even more versatile for production use like this than their other two SuperCat cable offerings so far. So let's take a closer look at that. The original SuperCat 5E cable I've been using is really good stuff. It comes in either black or this color they call violet. I think it's closer to a lavender or a wisteria, but they call it violet. Violet, you're turning violet, violet. What are you talking about? This is an SUTP cable, meaning it has an overall shield. In this case, it is a braided shield wrapped around the four individually unshielded twisted pairs. This stuff feels unique. It's both soft and tough feeling in your hand, if that makes sense. And after only a few uses, it lays beautifully flat and wraps as easily as any premium cable that I've ever used. I really like this cable and recommend it often for everyday stage and production use. Their other cable that you might have seen already is the SuperCat sound cable, which is distinctly blue and only available in blue at the moment. Again, this is a Cat5e cable, but this time in a UFTP construction. That means no overall shield, but each twisted pair has its own foil screen and individual drain wire encased in a layer of mylar for isolation. Those individual drain lines mean each twisted pair can be directly wired to an XLR connector, which is how they were able to go from the original cattails design with this machined housing and PCB inside to making the super cattails with just an RJ45 wire directly to the XLRs. In use, this cable is incredibly rugged, though certainly a bit stiffer than the original SuperCat cable we just looked at. It was designed specifically for rat sound to use on tours like with Pearl Jam and on festival stages like Coachella, and feels similar to Whirlwind's blue jacketed snakes in how hard and durable it is against cuts and repeated hard use. The new SuperCat 7 cable is an SFTP cable, meaning it has an overall braided shield and then individually foil wrapped twisted pairs. This cable is designed to meet the Cat 7 standard for bandwidth, making it usable for data transfer speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. Overall, this one feels much closer to the original SuperCat cable I've been using, and it's more flexible than the thicker SuperCat sound cable for sure, and that makes it easier to lay flat and to wrap as well. I've obviously had the original cable out on a bunch of jobs though, so it's a bit more relaxed at this point anyway, but I think the new Cat7 cable feels like it's gonna age just as well with regular use. Now I've mentioned Whirlwind a few times here and I should point out that both they and Radial have similar boxes to the Catbox 8 now with both input and output XLR connectors on a single box. As far as I know though, there's no way to separate the input and output sides of those boxes the way the Catbox 8 does with the internal jumper. 
So while they do offer some other unique features like being able to order the radial boxes with transformer isolated splits, both the radial and the whirlwind boxes are limited to just the four twisted pairs you get on the single network cable per box. So that's all I've got today. I'd be very interested to know what you think about the Catbox 8 and also about audio over cat solutions in general. It's been a few years now since I first covered these here on the channel, and I know a lot more of you have had the chance to use them in the real world now. And I'd love to hear your feedback, your opinions and stories if you're willing to share what you've learned. If you'd consider joining DC SoundUp on Patreon, you can watch these videos in the future with no ads, and I've made it as cheap as possible, and it really helps keep things going here, so thanks to everyone who's able to do that, and thanks again to SoundTools for making this one possible by sending everything over. I'll see you in the next one.